All right, Jason Rona back here in the J Concepts garage for a brand new vlog episode. Today, we're with Hannah Hardison, who's been traveling with the J Concepts team here uh, all last year and this year. But uh, Hannah, we, we made the, the first trip of the year. It happens quick. Yeah. We go to CRCRC, which is um, the name of the race is actually the Winter Midwest uh, Championships, I mm -hmm. believe. Yeah. And uh, But, you know, a lot of names get thrown out, but... Uh, this race starts early in the year. It happens quick. And talk to us a little bit about, uh, you know, this year flying up mm -hmm. and kind of um, what's the trip like going there? Yeah, so we went to CRC on, it was a Wednesday. It's kind of a longer race, um, much like how Nationals is a long race. Uh, so we went uh, Wednesday night. We flew in pretty late. And then, was it Tuesday night? Might have been Wednesday night. And then anyway, and there's like a full day of practice. So we did the full day of practice. And there's another basically full day of practice and then some seating. Um, but the trip was pretty good. It's really cold up there this time of year. Um, with the windshield, is like negative six. So uh, it was a little brutal. But we were inside, so it's not so bad. So you fly in. You do the normal thing. You, you rent a car. Mm -hmm. uh, you drive over to the track. And, you yep. know, um, not all these tracks are in... The heart of downtown in a big city yeah. this, this is these are sometimes a drive yeah. a drive away uh to get to a, a nice big location like they have there at, mm -hmm. at that at the uh the factory yeah yeah the ohio rc factory is over there in jeffersonville ohio so it's about 45 minutes from columbus which is where we flew into um it's a small town it gets like a one little strip there's probably a couple of mom and pop shops and like a coffee shop there um, other than that, you have like a Starbucks, a Chipotle near the hotel down an exit. And uh, other than that, it's like a 30 minute drive to the nearest anything else. Um, but it's kind of cool because like even on one day, um, Don Wick, Austin Wick's mom and I went to like a local coffee shop and got lunch there one day. And so it's kind of a nice opportunity to try something different and see something different than we normally do on these trips. So you get into the track, uh, you know, Kurt there, they build a tremendous track. I mean, this is one of the biggest 10 scale yeah. tracks probably, you know, that we'll go to all year, but uh, we get plenty of practice as you mentioned, but uh, the guys kind of going in, uh, the racers with uh, the smoothie twos, the silver compound, mm -hmm. seems to be our popular combination uh, as of late. I'd, I'd say we probably at a race like this, I mean, you've been at a bunch of them. I mean, we're probably running slick or smoothie tires at 90% of these races that we're going to today. Yeah, the Smoothie 2 was definitely the tire of the weekend at CRC. Uh, I mean, we had a couple guys still running the silver ellipse and, you know, standing them down, like uh, Brian Dunbar was doing that. And he still obviously did really well mm -hmm. um, with that method. Um, but yeah, of course, everyone wants to try the new Smoothie, and that was really great. And then now we have some options with the hard foams and the regular gray foams. So people kind of were experimenting with that. It seems like people tend to like the harder foams in the front and then the gray foams in the rear. Um, and then of course now we have the sidewall stiffener option too, which Spencer did that tutorial on YouTube. Um, and so people kind of played around with that also. So there's a lot of different options now, I feel like in the 10th scale like world when it comes to the slick racing. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly right. And then we get into, you know, seating, qualifying, you know, a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a surprise. I mean, we had uh, in say two wheel modified, yeah. Uh, Tom Rinnernick just came out swinging at this particular event. Uh, I believe he had a borrowed uh, x-ray car from Paul Siccarello. Mm -hmm. And uh, he also raced in the 17.5 class. And uh, very rare that you'll you'll have a, a driver fast enough to compete in 17.5 and modified. But where he was at this week, at that weekend, uh, he was at the top of the board in both. Yeah, Tom had a great weekend running both. People kind of were asking why he was running both. I think some of it has to do with his new job at R1. Um, but yeah, I mean, him and the x-ray car, that ended up being an awesome combo all weekend. And then some local x-ray guys were helping him out, which was kind of nice. And he was definitely, I think, even a little bit surprised with how well the car did when he put it down. Because I think, you know, he had a couple of different things with them. I think he had like an AE car with him. He had his TLR car with him. So he kind of was going to see what would work best. And straight from the gate out of practice, he decided the X-ray was the move, and it proved to be all weekend. Yeah, I mean, he was he was terrific in that class, getting the TQ, but he did it in the last two rounds, Yeah, uh, which is, is difficult because usually it's a tie-break situation. I believe Draymond or Drayton Staub was, ended up with uh, two TQs in the first mm -hmm. two rounds, and then Tom came back with two TQs in the second round. Yeah. So two kind of young guys uh, trying to make their mark out there and – 
Tom ended up getting the TQ. And uh, then we had Dakota coming in for some such a great last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, you know, TQ'd modified truck and then four wheel mod. Uh, he had a real tough time in mod truck at this race. Yeah. Uh, just didn't seem to be to go his way. Even though he TQ'd, mm-hmm. uh, he was having some issues. It was really cold in there. And uh, there was uh, just little random things kind of kept him out of the podium there. But that kind of allowed Spencer to kind of sneak in there and have a, a great uh, stadium truck run. Yeah, Spencer was able to take the win in stadium truck, and that you know worked out really well. It kind of seemed like throughout the weekend, stadium truck. I mean, obviously Dakota TQ'd, but it seemed like the remaining podium positions were a little like up in the air. Um, just like at some points, like Cole would do well, at some points Spencer would do well, so it kind of just went around. But yeah, ultimately Spencer ended up with the win there. Yeah, nobody had a lock on it. Right, it wasn't just obvious who was going to win. Like even last year, I mean Dakota just kind of dominated the whole thing, which mm-hmm. was cool, but. Um, or maybe it was, yeah, it was last year. So, but yeah. yeah, this year was kind of up in the air. And then we go to four wheel mod where Dakota was able to get his, uh, he got his TQ in there, I believe. And then, uh, and you know, we talked about this right after the race, but uh, the track there uh, has a tendency, depending on the weather, there there's some le- leakage that yeah. happens from the roof, and uh, there's uh, different. Uh, you know, they call them banana peels uh, mm-hmm. around the track from water that's that's leaking. And uh, he had mentioned in that last round of four-wheel drive that he was having such a bad run early that he was like, I'm considering pulling off in this because he's like, I'm doing so poor. But then he noticed everyone else having trouble. Yeah. He came back, got the last round <laughs> TQ, and then TQ's the whole thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah, he was surprised by that. Cause he kind of, halfway through that run, was feeling kind of discouraged, and he kind of stuck it out. And then everyone else also had just equally or worse of a run. And yeah. Um, so, yeah, he ended up doing well. But And, and that's kind of how it seemed like the as the weekend went on is that, I mean, every single run was just kind of trying to keep your car on the track and uh, not make a mistake. Because, I mean, that's really about being as clean as possible when it's a track like that. So, you know, he ended up getting uh, the, the two wins in four wheel. Mm-hmm. He was able to wrap that one up. And then kind of going back to Tom, um, you know, it – he got it in, in two victories also, but uh, the first one came a little easier, and the second one was the one where, you know, he had to take a couple chances right at the end, and he got a move uh, done on uh, Drayton and ended up pulling off the overall. Yeah, and that, I think it was A2 when he was, it was like probably the last, it might have been the last 30 seconds of the race. I mean, it was really close to the end, and he, they were coming around the, kind of the left side of the track there, and Drayton kind of left a little bit of an opening, and so Tom tried to get through there, and he made it through clean. And then was able to take the overall, like, kind of lock it up after A2. Yeah, I mean, I could see, you know, they were running a camera there. And obviously, you were filming, too. And, I mean, he was just so excited, you could tell, mm-hmm. uh, to, to win something like that. And, I mean, and, and, uh, and you know, more power to him. I mean, that's a tremendous victory there. Mm-hmm. You know, great competition. Uh, just, you know, really a stacked field. And, uh, and then he went ahead and, and he took the win in 17-5, which is yep. almost a... An afterthought after winning mod, but in a way, uh, these days it's, it's just as great of a victory. Yeah, yeah, and he actually did have two. You know, everyone, some people were like, "Is he running the same car in both classes?" He was running two different. He had two different X-ray vehicles. He was running um, in seventeen five and two wheel. But yeah, I think I think he surprised himself and uh, was kind of happy that he was able to experiment and decide what he wanted to do for himself this year. And so it'll be kind of interesting to see what he decides to do. You know, going forward with this ten scale racing. So, um, you know, we also obviously had a lot of interest overall with, I mean, the, the race was what, just under 400 entries Mm -hmm. and, you know, every year they get right around the same number. Yeah, it's it's big. It's it's usually a really big event. I believe stock had almost over a hundred entries There were 17.5 alone. So between 17.5, 13.5, we have, you know, 90 to a hundred entries alone just in those classes. Yeah. Yeah. So this was the 35th year, I believe of this race and, um, Kurt even was saying that it could potentially be the last year they host this race, at least at this facility, um, just because it's a lot to maintain that track, and I'm sure it's costly. But So it'd be kind of interesting to see if the race will continue at a different location or if this is the last one. But So it's a little bittersweet for him, but mm-hmm. it was a good turnout. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously always great to watch. I mean, I like the big 10-scale tracks. Yeah. Uh, they really give everybody the opportunity to kind of stretch the legs a little bit of the cars and kind of show you what... Uh, what they really have but kind of moving on uh, you came back it was a quick turnaround 
Uh, you had to jump in, and, and uh, Paul had the uh, the van and the trailer ready. <laughs> Pretty much. You guys went to uh, Alabama mm-hmm. uh, for the, the SIC race, which is a race time entertainment mm-hmm. event. There's uh, five of these now in the U.S. each year, but this is the first one on the calendar, and um, kind of reconnecting with, um, we got Lee back over here. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's able to, to ride in the in the van with you guys. So talk to us about driving now up to an event as opposed to flying yeah so we yeah basically flew back in we're here for less than 24 hours hop in the van and it was about a seven to eight hour drive it takes a little bit longer at the trailer of course when you're hauling all that weight but uh so we drove straight to alabama did the whole thing in one day Uh, of course we had lee there with paul in the front and then julian and i sat in the back um so it's kind of a fun dynamic of course and those road trips together are always a good time but it is, I mean, it is long. Of course, that one wasn't as bad as like LCRC. That one's, you know, like 13, 14, 15 hour drives. Mm-hmm. Um, but so pretty straightforward, but still, I mean, a lot of driving for Paul, of course. But it's kind of nice. We got there early and we kind of were able to spend one whole day just setting up and getting ready for the race because you got to do the tent, the trailer and all the things. Um, so it's kind of nice to have one day just to kind of ease into it because once racing and practice starts going, I mean, it goes fast and the days get long and so... It was kind of nice to get there in advance. Yeah, and then looking, you know, for me, um, you know, I was, uh, we took the opportunity, Allison and I went to the Chili Bowl, which was in Tulsa, Oklahoma. It had been a year uh, since we'd been out at that event, but, uh, you know, going back into SICK, you guys were set up, mm-hmm. uh, you're ready to go, they got a brand new track in there, uh, kind of a beautiful layout, nice rhythm section in front, yeah. whoop section, but, you know, it looks great when you first get there, perfect pictures, but... Uh, with all those racers, I mean, almost 500 or almost 600 entries, yeah. um, it gets tore up pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah, it starts out pretty pristine. And um, throughout the weekend, I they weren't doing a ton of watering, it seemed like, or that was their plan. And so, of course, by the end of the weekend, I mean, the track started to get really um, a lot of character, as they say. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, a lot of really big, deep, uh, like, divots and spots so you can kind of get caught up in. Uh it definitely started to become a game of survival for those guys mm-hmm. by the end of the weekend. But yeah, the motor style, the motocross style track was really interesting. It seems like a lot of people online, but even in person, just kind of enjoyed that style track. I mean, it was challenging certain spots like that rumble section in the back was probably a really challenging spot for people. But that like double, 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 I don't, even anyway, that like six yeah. pack, whatever that was there in the front. Um, people said they had a lot of fun driving that, which it looked fun to drive. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's the biggest comments we were kind of getting over and over here that people just enjoyed looking at the track. Yeah. Uh, they're just like, oh, I wish I had that or I wish I had that home. Mm-hmm. I mean, you get that over and over again. But yeah. uh, people like a lot of these obstacles and jumps and whoops, and they really like, from a viewer standpoint, now it's not easy on the track. Right. <laughs> Everyone thinks, obviously, they're going to do it perfectly, but, you know, in their mind. But th- these things are difficult, and especially you start adding the the roughness to the track where it gets bumpy. You sent me photos as the main was going and yet, so you could actually see the straightaway, how it was like, I call it scaling up where the mm-hmm. layers of the track starts kind of peeling off. You have these, these ruts where people just start, you end up going around them. Yeah. So the, the hot racing lines end up completely changing from qualifying. You got to adapt on the fly. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then we had, uh, you know, of course, Ryan Mayfield came in, his first race of the year, he got all three TQs. And, um, you know, I think the, the very first main up was uh, the, the Truggy main, yes. Truggy A main. That was a 30-minute race, what they do there. And he got a, he got an okay start. And then uh, he said he tried to play it a little cool. And just, he said it was really hard to drive. He wasn't exactly used to the track. Mm-hmm. And he said uh, Jared made a little run on him there in the end. But, you know, he held on for the, ended up the TQ and the win. Yeah, the truck main was kind of interesting because it kind of started out, obviously he had the TQs, he started first in the grid, but um, Seth Van Dalen was like right there with him. And so for a little bit, actually, Seth was able to lead some of it and unfortunately he had some kind of flame out or break or something. Um, but I mean, he was going strong for a while. So it would have been kind of interesting to see how he could have kept driving there with Mayfield. But yeah, eventually Mayfield was able to kind of check out in that race. But kind of as the race went on, he was saying it was kind of hard to hang on to his car and Tebow started to kind of make some time up on him, but luckily he was kind of able to just hold strong there to the end because 
And I think what was kind of interesting was because that was the first main of the day, he had to kind of experiment with the new racing line Mm -hmm. because a lot of times they were just going down the straightaway initially, but now with the new like ruts in the track, they had to either go really wide or try to stay really tight on that pipe. Mm -hmm. And so it was challenging because there were a lot of cars flying like into pit lane or off the track. And so he was trying to navigate all of that for the first time, basically in that main. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, that's kind of the one you use as your warm up almost. And it's good that it's a truck because the truggy seems to be a little more forgiving. Uh, You can get, if you get in trouble, you can kind of get out of it a little sooner. So, uh, you know, great run for Ryan. Ended up running the the reflexes there, Mm -hmm. uh, which is, you know, kind of been our hot tire for several, several years, the reflexes on Truggy. But uh, I think the majority, if not all of our guys, ended up uh, running the reflexes in the main. Yeah. So uh, coming up then in the the schedule was, I believe they had the first e-buggy main. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, of course, Ryan was TQ in that one. And I believe he he told me that he tried some green rehabs in in that particular main. And he actually stayed clean, ran a good, consistent run. Uh, Track was still beat up, of course, but uh, I think Ty made a little bit of a a nice run on him there. And they got pretty close, but Ryan was able to hold off that first win. And, and, you know, as standard at the the race time entertainment races, they run two A mains for the E classes. Right. And then what they do is they take your single best finish time. So they don't combine both. I saw some people online kind of uh, kind of going back and forth whether how this format is. But, um, you know, they've had instances in the past where if they combine both mains together, your finishes, if you don't have a good first main, people don't even show up for the second main. So you might have uh, 16, 18 cars out there. But if you don't have a good first main or you break, then people just pack it up and they don't bother staying. So that's why they've run the format the way they do, where it's your single best qual point and then backup is time. So, uh, you know, and that's important. You know, Ryan knows this. He's ran a ton of these races now. Everybody in the, in the, at the race knows uh, the situation. So you run that good first main. You try to stay smooth. Then you put the pressure on the, anybody in the A2 to run better than you. Yeah. And, uh, and that's, and that's kind of how things will end up. But, uh, you know, so Ryan gets that one. We go into the buggy main, which is the one that everybody wants. Uh, usually the most dicey, the most competitive. Yeah. Um, so kind of leading into that, um, you know, you're kind of going back and forth there. You're videoing, taking some photos, uh, kind of monitoring what's going on. What's it like there being in the pits when people are kind of frantic, I guess you could say, and then trying to get out for a buggy main like that? Yeah, I mean, I'm always kind of just sitting by doing either catch up on photos or, or whatever while everyone's kind of gearing up. And, and the way these weekends go on, on main day is like, there's a lot of calm, waiting around, kind of just prepping your car, like it's good. And then suddenly it's like go time and everyone's kind of getting everything together. They're warming up their engines, they're getting their pit guys and they're heading out to the track. And, and there's a lot of discussion about like tires and lines and trying to figure it out because it does change a lot compared to qualifying or practice. And um so I kind of just either stay out of the way or help if anyone needs some help there getting ready. But um, yeah, it's a little chaotic there for a minute, especially going into the nitro buggy main because I mean there was a lot of de- I mean there was some debate about what tires I think they were gonna run because like like you said Ryan tried the rehab to see if that would have been better. I think he decided it wasn't gonna be the fast tire, so he went back to the reflex. But yeah, I mean ultimately it's a little crazy, but it works out. So you get out there, they get a few warm-up laps. That's mm-hmm. traditionally what happens. And, um, you know, at really, really large events, they have an A-main warm-up. Right. Where you get to go out there for 10 minutes, kind of shake your equipment down, you know, kind of second-guess your your everything, I guess <laughs> yeah. you could say. And But at, at something like this, you, you don't get that opportunity. you got to be out there. you got to be ready. And in three or four minutes, mm-hmm. you're, you're going. So uh, they take off. You know, Ryan has a good start. And... And and ends up really in a battle with several guys at the beginning, but eventually it's it's him and Spencer that yeah. kind of broke away from the majority of the pack, and and they were close. Yeah, they battled it out for, uh, on and off a good bit. In fact, Spencer was leading for after they kind of swapped the lead a couple of times, and Spencer was leading for a while, um, and then. Mayfield kind of was coming down the back there and he was trying to kind of make up some time and he had a lap car kind of break in front of him a little bit. So that kind of got him, held him up a little bit. But then he was able to kind of catch up on Spencer again. Spencer was able to kind of keep going. But um, ultimately, Mayfield was able to kind of make a pass on him for the win by the end. Yeah, so he ended up 
Now he's in a position where you got the Truggy main, he's got the E buggy main number one. Mm -hmm. You get the one you really, really like, which is the eight scale nitro buggy. But then you're kind of waiting it out, and it's a long day. Yeah. Uh, you got, I believe it was two uh, 18 hour days yeah. there, Saturday and Sunday. So uh, no rest, uh, but you get there, the last race of the night, last race of the event, E buggy number two. And um, that one was a, a little bit of a, a cluster because it wasn't. It was Ryan leading, making a mistake. Then yeah. we had Ty and Tyler Jones and Spencer yeah. was in there. And several several guys were in the mix in that race. But ultimately, Ty won that main. Uh, I believe Tyler Jones second, Mayfield third. Yes. But they all changed positions probably three or four times in the last couple minutes. Yeah. So it was a really tight uh, event in itself. Um, you know, that kind of wrapped that one up. Ryan gets the... the uh, the sweep, the three class wins. Uh, we had some good performances, you know, right across the board. You know, we talked about Spencer and Tyler Jones and uh, Seth Van Dalen and, mm -hmm. you know, several others. But uh, we had some good performances in the intermediates and classes and 40 plus. Mm -hmm. There's just so many classes at these events that sometimes it's, it's hard to really follow every single one of them at the same time because they're just one after another. Yeah, I try really hard at these events to kind of keep a running list of everyone that comes so I can keep tabs on results as the weekend goes on. Because I do want to focus on some of the intermediate guys, the 40 plus guys, like not just our pro guys. I mean, it's nice to mm. kind of display some of the other team. Um, but yeah, I think ultimately we ended up with like 23 podium positions and it was all set and done by the end of the weekend. Um, and actually it was kind of nice to see like Mason made, I think the truck podium. And so like, it was kind of nice to see him do well with his new HP car. Um, obviously Joe made some podiums with his S works car. So it's, it was nice to see some of these guys, their new platforms, make the podium at their first event of the year. Yeah. And one of the things, uh, somebody pointed out right away was of the top five, I believe in two of the classes, they were all different manufacturer mm -hmm. vehicles. Yeah. So not only did you have the Mugen, the Techno, you know, the, um, what else do we got? HB. There's we Ryan with the Kyosho. X-Ray. We yeah. had a Kyosho out there. So um, I believe all five of either Pro Buggy or Truggy, mm -hmm. they were, each one was a different kit manufacturer. So somebody pointed that out right away, which I thought was kind of neat. It is cool. Especially, um, it's. I think it's nice for us too when we have like, obviously a lot of guys running the same tires, but all different chassis. And it's, I think it speaks to like our tires sometimes and that they can work well for a lot of different people and i don't know i think it's kind of fun to see that yeah the versatility kind of yeah. coming in in the in the main so uh personally i was out at the chili bowl with allison which is another 600 entry race <laughs> uh put on by scotty Ernst. this is in tulsa oklahoma they got the uh the real uh, chili bowl going on we'll call it you know they're none of them are fake but uh, we got the one-to-one <laughs> -one cars yeah. at, at the chili bowl which is a whole nother thing i mean that's we went over there one year. We got nice enough. Uh, Brent uh, Densford gave us tickets to go watch. And I, I couldn't believe how many people, mechanics, trailers, uh, vehicles, and the bleachers were just packed and uh, exciting over there at the, uh, you know, the Chili Bowl side. But over on our RC Chili Bowl side, uh, 600 entries, we were the, the spec tire for the street stock class, which I believe Scotty said this is their record entry in that class at over 70 entries just in street stock uh, you know then usually sprint outlaw sprint and these other sprint classes are the biggest uh, but then there's late model which is right up there midwest and then there's the you know the sc uh, midwest classes so they have a, a ton of different events there too but in the end we had um, justin draymeyer who races for j concepts he won the midwest uh, class and he tq'd uh, sprint car also and then in late model we had a robert chapman who has been going to that event ever since he's been a little a little kid and uh, one of the first guys that i saw when i went there with allison many years ago uh, he picked up the big a big late model win and it's good to see robert run so well he had uh, a lot of people helping of course his dad we had uh, nathan dean came in uh who's uh you know we call him almost like he's almost like the mayfield of uh yeah. of dirt oval racing but he comes in, he helped um, all of his Texas buddies with their cars. It was awesome to see. Had him up on scales, doing everything, but he really helped Robert to that victory. And then uh, in the big, the sprint class, uh, Outlaw Sprint, we had Ryan Ralph uh, basically win it on the last lap. Uh, Four-minute race uh, in the main, and 
he made the last lap and second place did not and he actually ran out of battery on his last lap uh, otherwise uh, Dustin Malico would have would have won the, the race but he missed getting that extra lap and so uh, Ryan Relf I mean I know he's over there Scotty's looking at the computer Ryan's looking at everybody like did I win like because there's a question and it's so easy with um, four second laps or five second laps to miss laps so you got to look at the computer uh, the standings aren't always official when it's done because there's missed laps so Scotty's got to look through it and He's like, hey, did I win or not? Scotty's like, yep, you won it. And uh, he came up. He was so excited and uh, talked to Scotty about it. And obviously, Scotty gets his his interviews through. But a uh, good overall event, uh, a lot of displays. They had a big manufacturer's row, a lot of displays out there from all the manufacturers, you know, custom works, and uh, was right there out front. Uh, we got a lot of uh, hobby shops there stocking a lot of different product for the racers and just a really good event overall to go to. And I know Scotty loves putting it on. They got a great track crew there because they'll tear it up like every, you know, eight to 10 races. They completely tear the track up, roll it back down because uh, they want to keep tire wear a little lower. And so that's kind of the Chili Bowl in a nutshell is um, a lot of, lot of good racers there. Uh, with the way they run qualifying and the way they run the mains, it's a little open to uh, a lot of people can win. It's not just narrowed down to the absolute fastest guy. Uh, you got to get a little lucky. You got to be good in traffic, and that's how these uh, drivers end up winning. So uh, another treat we had there was uh, Kyle Larson, sort of the the real we'll call the real car <laughs> racer yeah. uh, juggernaut guy that came in, and he came in with his son. And I know Scotty was just. Um, through the roof over this because he came out and spent a lot of time with the RC drivers and he drove uh, on the track himself with his son. They had some cars prepped for him, did a pretty good job in himself driving the RC stuff, did an interview with Scotty. And I mean, the whole pits emptied, came right to the fence and really uh, watched all of his practice runs there in front of everybody. Uh, kind of a little awkward to come into something like that and just somebody hands you your radio and say, hey, start driving, and everybody's watching you. But he did a good job with it, and um, and I think he was having a good weekend over on the Chili Bowl. I think he got maybe sixth or seventh in the overall results. But in general, uh, top top racer, uh, big man on campus kind of came yeah. in there and uh, and kind of showed us how it's done on the RC track. But really just kind of kind of going down to earth with everybody and and uh, showing his appreciation. He didn't leave without... Um, everybody got an autograph that wanted one. Anybody that got a picture wanted one, which was nice to see. And uh, so we had a great overall experience there at the Chili Bowl. I know Scotty was... Uh, they had to tear down, get out of there, and uh, pack up. But um, he explained to me that, uh, you know, last couple of years, they've moved the track inside. It used to be in a certain location. Now he's kind of back over uh, in a different location than he was before because they want to have the main street pit area like we talked about and uh looks good it's a great presentation anybody that wants to do a dirt oval race it's definitely that bucket list kind of event and i see the same people there every year uh, and then a lot of new ones so uh, overall just a, a fantastic uh, event to go to and uh glad we got the chance to go over there so um that kind of rounds through the events we just went to but uh upcoming stuff we like to talk about our upcoming events uh we'll kind of go into just a little bit in january a little bit of february but what do you have coming up that you're going to be traveling to yeah so for me next will be the ins race at sdr seats we'll kick off the year there for the ins series so that's exciting um and then for me there'll be a little bit of a break um we'll have the local emerge race here so that'll be fine i'll do that and then from there, it's the Dirt Nitro Challenge at the end of February, which I'm really excited about. That's always like such a fun race. It's a long one, but it's a big one for the year. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised that there's going to be 800 plus entries out there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if we're getting, you know, 600 uh, Chili Bowl, 600 at SIC, I mean, Dirt Nitro Challenge, I because there's a lot of international drivers that come in for that. I could see that easily being 800 plus entries. So there's going to be some late nights over there. Uh, we'll be for sure racing under the lights uh, as usual but uh, that's kind of makes the atmosphere there uh, we have a ton of drivers spending a lot of time practicing out there right now getting in laps you know we kind of did our california tour 
back in December, but a lot of drivers uh, you're probably noticing on social media out there running, right? Yeah, so obviously, yeah, we had Spencer and Ryan and Adam and all those guys with us um, back in December, but even lately, like, um, I know some of the associate guys will be doing some practice out there, like Lee, and I'm sure Aiden Horn and some of those guys, and, um, but yeah, I, I see a lot of t- us being tagged on Instagram with all our guys getting ready for the Dirt Nitro Challenge out there. Um, and so it's kind of nice because this year is going to be back at Joey's track, the dirt in Paris. So, because last year was at Thunder Alley. So, I think people are excited about that. They want to try out the track, the dirt, kind of be prepared for what's to come. Yeah, I mean, so in between those two events that you're going to be at, we got Motorama, which uh, Fred Reap, he's going to be making the trip up there and kind of supporting the whole event. Uh, years ago, they kind of did away with 10 scale off road. Um, and, and they also went to more of a eight scale electric only so it used to be nitro and electric but now it's electric only but uh, one of the big events they're having there now is the dirt oval event Mm -hmm. so speaking of dirt oval we just did chili bowl now we got the motorama dirt oval event and uh was talking to alfie uh who's you know part of the organization there and he says it's sold out so oval sold out there and uh the the spec tires are jake hans sprinter uh so uh, get those sprinters ready uh, there's a ton of classes out there, just like the Chili Bowl. And uh, so Fred Reap will be going up there supporting with the J Concepts team. And then we got Rich uh, that's going to be heading out to USTE, which is the Ultimate Scale Truck Expo. And uh, Williston, Florida is where that is. And every year I always say that I want to go and make this event because the you know, when Rich brings the pictures back or the photos, I always see this and I'm like, I really want to participate. But sometimes the dates don't work out. But uh, we've been doing a lot with the scale trucks recently. Um, not only the monster trucks, but the scale trucks, a lot of new releases. So uh, it'll be nice to get up there, get a little display going, and then get involved in the competition. Yeah, should be a good February. Busy, but good. Well, we appreciate you staying tuned here with J Concepts. Remember, subscribe and uh, you know like this video if, uh, if you enjoyed it. And uh, be sure to follow us on all the... Uh, social media platforms, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, of course. And uh, we appreciate you watching and we'll see you next time.